uh, thank everybody for coming for today's uh, afternoon session. Our speaker will be Zixin Kao from the Department of Computing and at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, Zixin, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for coming. So I'm going to talk about the diamond-free editing kernel. So I guess everybody knows uh, graph modification problems. You are given a graph and you have a budget K. You do some modification to the graph to make it satisfy some property. For example, if you, the property is to be a cluster graph, that is every component is a click. Then if you, you can delete one vertex from this graph or you can delete two edges. So basically, uh, that's the problem. <coughs> and on such a problem, you can ask three questions. So first one is MP complete. If, so the second is, is it FPT? If yes, what's the best F you can get? And if it is FPT, you can still ask, is, does it have a polynomial kernel, right? So, and the third question is all the workshop about. So, uh, the celebrated theorem by Louis and Jan Kakis and it was before most of you were born. <laughs> and so, the, for, if, if the operation is vertex deletion, pretty much either MP complete or trivial. Here, by trivial, we mean there are only finite number of graphs have this property. That is trivial. Otherwise, it's MP complete. So, they also uh, pointed out that such a general result for edge modification problem is very unlikely. And after 40 years, it's still very unlikely. So, and we don't expect that. So, but if you want to know some of the results, maybe you can go FPT wiki to check the com complexity status. So, I guess everybody knows this, otherwise you are in the wrong room. So, so, okay, now let's, because for edge modification problems, basically we do not have such a clear cut result. So maybe let's simplify the situation a little bit. Let's consider H free modification. So here by H, we mean a single graph. Okay, uh, just a small but crucial point is H has to at least two vertices, otherwise it's trivial. So for example, if in the first slide, the example class graph, that just pre that happens to be the P3 free graphs. You do not have any path on uh, more than two edges. So for edge free, the situation is a little bit better. So for what extension we know is MP hard, and for edge modification, we do have a dichotomy. Some of them are hard, some are not. So at least, so all the modification plans are FPT, so that's uh, old and well known results. So Which for the. Yeah. Which Kai? Beijing or. Legend uh, Kai in Hong Kong, yeah. Chinese University of Hong Kong. So, we uh, also for the vertex deletion problems, that, that's, 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 you can directly use the hit inside. So that's uh, you have a pandemic corner. So there's a big question mark about edge modification. So Tsai asked whether all of them have pandemic corner. So of course you know the answer is no. And the first one was found by Stephen and Magnus. Um, so this shows some very special graph. Artificial graph has no kernel. That graph has to be. I didn't draw this because it's really not important. So if you really want to know, is you have a four claw, so one, so k one four, and replaced by two of the leaves by a pair of two twins. So you get a seven vertex graph. That that's no. And then the four guys from French they show a lot of the H and no. So including paths of sufficient length and all the, almost all the cycles. And uh, again, this is the legend high in Hong Kong and uh, uh, Yufei, as, uh, as unfortunately I didn't find a picture of Yufei, so Cai and Cai showed actually for most H, the answer is no. Okay, so uh, finally Sandy back. okay, most of them no. So which are of this few that do have Okay, so now our question is about that. So to summarize this uh, no result, hardness result, so Pell and uh, Mihal has read. So actually, so the existence of polynomial kernels are kind of like exceptions, okay? And those are exceptions are only for specific and constant size graphs H. So that's, okay? Now the question is how specific and 
how small the size should be. Okay, you can find this uh, from in their paper of 2015, uh, I think. Okay, so here is the list of the basically the known results. So the first uh, is about pathes. So if you have P2, that's basically trivial, right? So P3 is cluster editing. So that's a linear kernel for all. And for P4, that's co-graph editing. So we have cubic vertex kernel. And a sharp contrast is when the path is longer than four. So for P5, there's no answer, no kernel anymore. So similarly, for any cycle that is larger than three. So because C3 is really special because that is, happens to be a clique. And for any clique, the, the question is really trivial. For completion, you cannot do anything, right? And for deletion, it's just like hitting set. Because for edge modification problems, the trouble that compared to vertex deletion is when you do some edge modification, you may have a set of effects. So when you break some edge, you may introduce new copies, right? But if the edge is a clique, then this will not happen. You will not bring a new click by deleting edges, right? So it's just, you can just directly use hitting side. So for click, it's simple. Or another sharp contrast is if this edge is a click minus one edge. Again, the completion is trivial because you have to add that edge, you have no choice. But for deletion, now we don't have a kernel, polynomial kernel. Okay? And uh, of course, here we have a condition that the clique size is at least five. How about three? That happens to be P3, so it's a cluster. We know that. And when the clique size is four, what we have is a diamond. Okay? That's today's topic. So, and the last line is about another kind of like a strange condition, three connected and with at least two non-edges, okay? So actually, if you combine this last three lines, you will see, basically it answers all the questions about three connected. Because if you have only one non-edge, that's K minus E, right? If you have no non-edge, that's the right. So basically, all three connected cases are solved. So in particular, we know all the answers when the H has two vertices or three vertices. So the next step is four, right? So here are all the graphs on four vertices. So uh, of course, some of them are not here, but if someone is not here, his complement is here. So for our problems, uh, H-free completion is basically H-bar free deletion. And for completion, H-free and H-bar free is the same, are the same, right? So here are all the, so for P4, we know they have a cubic kernel, and for K4, that has a, actually, by hitting side, we already have a polynomial kernel, and a, a smaller size, K to the power 4, was given by uh, Yufei Cai. And for diamond, Sandeep has given a cubic vertex kernel for the edge deletion problem. And this talk is about the editing. So we know the two open problems that have been asked many times, especially the claw free. So we know none of them. And so for C4, the answer is no. Okay, so diamond is K4 minus E, so only one edge is missing. So uh, maybe you can, from the picture, you can say something. So if you have two click, uh, okay, the intersect, are more than one vertex, you have a diamond, right? So for us, the problem is wholly about maximum clicks. So let's say an example. This is a small example. It has only six maximum clicks and a bunch of uh, diamonds. Now the budget K is four. Let's see. So. Uh, there's a diamond and from a small click and a big one. So somehow you can see, you, you, you are not allowed to delete anything from the big click, right? If you do something, you will bring more diamonds than, than, than fix it. So pretty much what you have, the only choice you have to do is you delete the edge, one of the edges instant to V9, right? So we can pick this one. So the intuition is, if a click is too big, you are not to 
play with it, okay? So don't mess, mess with big leaks. Okay, the second thing is, uh, now come to the left part, so you can see, um, w there are quite a lot of uh, um, diamonds, uh, uh, can diamonds share this long edge, U to V2. So basically, V3 to V6, the four vertices are adjacent to V2 and are adjacent to U2. But V2 and U2 are not adjacent, so you have a lot of diamonds. For all of them, the only non edge is U to V2. So this is quite obvious, we, so we have to add that edge, we have no option. But after that, you can see something. So at the original graph, U to V1 was not in any diamond, right? It's kind of innocent, but now it's in a diamond. And just like what, so what we did here, we have no option. We have to delete V to U1. Okay, although it originally was not in any diamond, so but we have to do. After that, we need to delete another one that also was not in any diamond of the original graph. <coughs> so pretty much this is the intuition, and this uh, our algorithm is to use this for uh, three intuitions. So. We are playing with maximum clicks. So we see a maximum click is type one. You can think that's bad, okay? So bad maximum clicks. If it has intersect uh, another one with at least two vertices, okay? So otherwise it's good. So type two. So a basic observation is if a graph is diamond free, if and only if it has no bad maximum click, right? So if everything is good, the graph is diamond free. Uh, we also need a threshold for what's a large, a big click, right? So we happen to choose a kind of arbitrary number, 3k plus 1, but not that arbitrary, just the kind of arbitrary. Okay, so the first rule is, we have seen a lot of this, if some edge is shared by too many diamonds, so you have to delete it. If a non-edge is shared by too many diamonds, you have to add it, so, and you have to do that so, and decrease the budget accordingly. And uh, because this is quite uh, naive, so we assume throughout the talk that this rule has been applied. And it, okay, we, we don't worry about this. Clear? Okay, now, as uh, see a little bit. Uh, so, let's assume this is a minimal solution. Okay? <coughs> So uh, th th this proposition is basically the intuition that if it has a big maximum click, you are not going to do too much about that. So it has to be a big maximum click in the resulting graph, G star. Okay, the lemma is, so if you add an edge, this, both ends of the edge are happening in some small bad clicks. So let's say a proof. Uh, suppose that U and V is an edge, that a minimal solution adds, okay? So for any edge, you can find a maximum clique containing that, right? Suppose U is a maximum clique of G star containing U and V. So the claim, first claim is V is in some diamond in this U, G of induced by U, okay? Not G star. G star is diamond free. Okay, so in that we claim there is a diamond. Suppose we show by contradiction. Suppose there is no such a diamond. What happens is, if if V is not in any diamond, then in the neighborhood of V, it has to be a cluster graph. Okay, if the neighborhood of V is not a cluster graph, you have P3 together with V, you have a diamond. So, a cluster graph is a bunch of clicks, right? Let's say A are the non-trivial clicks, each has at least two vertices. And B are the side of trivial clicks, each has only size one. And then the other vertices in U, in the big side U, is just non-neighbors of V, right? So we have three parts A, B, and C. So the idea is this. So you can think that any vertex in C cannot be adjacent to two vertices of any set of A. If you adjacent to two vertices in A, you have a diamond. Two vertices in A and one in V and another in C, you have the diamond, okay? So in other words, the C and the connection to A is very sparse, okay? So 
So you, you, you can do a little bit of a math, but I think everybody can do it by yourself. Is if B, so we can always find another solution better than, than making your click. So for example, if B is larger, then you can, I think you can cut U, C. If C is larger, then you can uh, connect in B and C and cut from other parts. So, so basically, this is not an optimal solution. So. Hmm? Two maximal clicks, and you're going to add one and make it one big click. So neither of the two big ones stay maximal clicks. I mean, they stay clicks, but they don't stay maximal clicks. Well, that, you, you need to show that you, we can show that. Yeah. So, so we assume the rules one and two cannot be applied. Okay. So yeah, you, you, that can happen. Your big click. If someone has only two non edges, you add them, the click is accurately increased. So right. right. But after rule one and rule two have been applied, that cannot happen. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so in other words, if V is not in that diamond of GU, then you, you have a smaller s solution. But this is a minimal solution, so that cannot happen, so we have a diamond. So if we have a diamond, then we can find a type, type, type 1, so bad click, okay, containing V and C, X and Y, okay? This is a maximum click of G, right? And this maximum click intersects U with at least two vertices. At least a three, right? So by the proposition at the top, so this one cannot be big. If it's big, then it's a maximum click of G star, but then G star has two bad clicks. So K is small. So every, the end points of every added edges have to be in some small maximum clicks, small bad clicks, okay? So this is the only proof I'm giving because this kind of proofs are kind of ugly. So after, uh, we know the ends of the edited edges. So the deleted edges is a little bit more complicated, but still related to small type one clicks. So the point is everything is about small type one clicks. Okay. So a deleted edge, the ends. Um, so so the, the a deleted edge is either in a small maximum click or that click intersects some small type one click, okay? So now we have the uh, kind of technical definition. So what takes V is vulnerable if it's in some small bad click or in a click that intersects small bad click. So in this example, you can check that the 14 labeled vertex vertices are vulnerable and others are protected. So, so the point is, a minimal solution never touches those protected vertices. It only plays with the vulnerable vertices. You can see from the so four edges. Um, but of course, the trouble is we, we are not allowed to just delete those protected vertices, right? So that's the trouble. So the main rules. So uh, it's kind of easy to bound the <coughs> small bad clickers because a bad click is kind of involved in some diamond, right? If you have too many of them, somehow you have too many of disjoint diamonds. You have no, no way to solve it. It's kind of like the, the sunflower thing. So basically, this is easier to bound. And because each type one, uh, each small uh, click has at most 3k plus two vertices, so you, you can also bound the number of vertices in that. So this is easy. Uh, we use the same idea. We can bound the number of type one clicks, including those big ones. But now we, we, need, we need to bound the size as well. So the rule is if, you, if a big type one click has a pr private, so that means this protects only in this big, big bad click, okay? So if it's private and protected, it's deleted. And after that, we can show if the instance is a yes instance, it can have, cannot have more than k to uh, k vertices. Okay, so then we get a bound of all the vertices in all the type uh, bad clicks. So it turns out to be the, it's harder to bound the good clicks. Because they are innocent, right? Okay, so the idea is again, we, uh, 
try to connect them with the small and bad clicks. So let T denotes all those vertices only appear in the, tab, uh, in the good clicks. Okay, so if there is a protected vertex in TG, then just delete it. Okay, the last rule is a little bit, I uh, have to be a little bit informal because this is really technique. So at, from the example, we can see an edge in a tab two click was not in a diamond, that's the definition, right? Unless an edge is added. So, so for example, U, V2, U1 was not in any uh, diamond because that click is a uh, tab two, it's a good one. But after you added this edge, there's a diamond containing U2, V1, uh, sorry, V2, U1. Okay, so the point, the idea is you want to maintain the, uh, the status of protected, so for a big tab two click. So to do that, you only need K plus three vertices, okay? But how to find those, that's a little bit, we use some marking technique. So for every pair of vertices in small type one, again, we small bad clicks. So we mark K plus one common neighbors of them. And then again, for each of the market vertex W and U, we mark again K plus one common neighbors of U and W. And like this, so each pair we mark some like cube vertices. And if a vertex is not marked and is in TG, we delete. Okay, and we delete all of them together. So then we only mark the K2 cube vertices. So we got the kernel. So, so far so good? It looks like, it's, it's a little bit, the last part is a little bit technical, but we have to skip that. Um, it looks like a good idea, right? But um, the real trouble is, we cannot find maximum clicks, right? There are exponential number of maximum clicks, right? So to, 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 to carry out this algorithm, we have to find all the maximum clicks. That's the trouble, right? So the idea is we do not need really to enumerate the maximum clicks. What we need to do is to check each vertex. Is this one in a small type one, a small bad click, or some other type? So we only need to make, for each vertex, we need to see what kind of clicks it is in. Okay, we, we do not need to know how many clicks actually. So the key observation is, for each edge, we can see whether it has two non-adjacent neighbors, right? So if it has, then we know it's in some diamond. So in other words, we can enumerate all the, this, let's see, the center edge of the, all the diamonds. We just enumerate all the edges, okay? So once you enumerate those edges, you can find all the vertices in type one click. And uh, with a little bit um, technique, we can just mark all the other vertices, finding the type of them, okay? So then we can apply the reduction rules. So that's it. So for the edge deletion, we have a simpler kernel. Uh, Sandy already has a cubic vertex kernel, but that was, but with our new result and the new structure, we can get a very, very simple one. So we, have, we still have row one. So if your edge is shared by too many, delete that. So after that, you just, uh, if you have these two rows, and after that, you have, again, the cubic kernel. So now I think the open problems so Michael has kindly warned us on Monday that claw is difficult. It's dangerous to play with claw. Okay, so maybe Paul, it looks a little bit uh, nicer, okay? Maybe, but I'm not sure, maybe. So maybe we can play with that first. So, so again, this is something like Maximum clicks. So that is diamond free, right? So two maximum clicks can intersect only one vertex. For for power free graph. So if you have two maximum clicks intersect, then this exactly the opposite. So they have to intersect all but one vertex. So if two maximum clicks intersect, then you and we. So if you have another vertex here, it's our power, right? So this is just the opposite way of that. So maybe you can, again, play with the maximum clicks. Okay, so that's it.
Um, you know, it's very, it, this is really interesting stuff. Uh, I want to ask, um, the first a, a comment, which is that we were recently at a meeting in, in the UK where Paul Seymour, who's, you know, famous for graph minors, what is the structure of a graph that excludes H as a minor? But he said he's been working for 10 years, the last 10 years he's obsessed with what is the structure of a graph which excludes things like an induced P4? Induced the question P4. is, are you using any of his structure theory? Because they've, they've turned up a whole lot of really rich structure theory about excluding small induced subgraphs. Mm -hmm. and the question is, are you, are you aware of that and are you using any of it? We used a lot of that. So if you exclude the induced P4, that's co graph, right? Kirkra has a lot of, uh, of good structures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they're looking at everything. Yeah. Like, you know, any, any kind of small, small vertex graphs. And another question along the lines is, is that you're, you talked about the motivation being um, that only for very small graphs is there going to be any good news. Right. That, that's right. that kind so of. So then like you want to sort out which ones have good news and which ones have bad news. That, right, that's right. the motivation. Right. And that's sort of a law of small numbers issue. You know, the law of small numbers is this jokey thing that says that when you look only at small examples, you will be led astray in combinatorics. It's only in the long term that you get the truth. Are there any connections that you know between? the law of small numbers exploration here and other small number issues? Because there are, these two exist. Uh, I, I, I cannot answer that question because it's kind of like, but I guess. Uh, are there connections? Uh, maybe I can think of another way similar. So you can think of us for Maybe for modular decomposition, if a small graph, maybe it has a module. But if the graph is large, the chance it has a module is zero. So it's kind of like only so small graphs have a high chance to have have modules, non-trivial modules, of course. 